Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. So it's no surprise that each language has its own way of doing the same thing, but in different connotations and in different ways. Whether it be a syntax difference or a vocabulary difference, each language has its own unique way of doing the same thing. Now, one of those things which I'm going to talk about today seems like it would be a straightforward and easy thing, especially if you are an English speaker, but... It's not that easy in Japanese. By the way, I realize these are called Japanese 101. In other words, they're supposed to be easy, but what's the point of teaching you guys easy stuff when I could teach you guys more difficult yet interesting stuff? Now, as you can tell from the title of today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to count in Japanese. Now, you might be saying like, Joey, but we know how to count. I mean, it's just one, two, four, shit. Well, yes, in English, it is just a simple matter of saying like, there are two apples, there are 16 people, there is one pin. But in Japanese, unfortunately, it's not that simple. In fact, depending on the situation, it can be so difficult that not even native Japanese speakers and native Japanese people understand 100% how it exactly works. So today I'm gonna tell you guys just how difficult it is, in fact, to actually count in Japanese. Now, unlike English and other languages, it's not just a simple matter of saying however many number of items there are. In Japanese, especially, suffixes are really important. In this case, a suffix known as jōsushi is added to a number when counting different objects, and this suffix, or this jōsushi, changes depending on what the object is. For example, the suffix when counting people is nin. So say for example, if there are four people in the room, you would say there is yonin. Things like birds are counted using the suffix wa. So if there are two birds, you would say niwa. Now, if you're already confused at this point, then uh, prepare for the worst. Because like a lot of rules in grammar, there are exceptions to the rule. You know the I before E except after C rule that they have in English? It's funny because there are actually more words in the English language that actually break that rule rather than follow it. And it's also the same thing concerning these jōsushi suffixes. Now, most of these suffixes when counting things usually have to do with the kanji that corresponds to it. For example, we use the suffix nin when counting people because the kanji that is used for nin is the kanji that is used for people. Makes sense. Same thing with the birds as well. We use the suffix wa because the kanji for wa can also be read as hane, which means feather. And since birds have feathers, again, it makes sense. But it can also be used to count rabbits and butterflies. Yeah, a suffix meaning feather can be used to count animals that don't have feathers. Figure that shit out. Another example of this is the suffix hong. Now, usually the suffix hong is used to count objects that are usually long and or narrow. Long stick-like objects, you know, things like umbrellas, Bottles, spears, arrows, all use the suffix hong. But the suffix hong can also be used to count completely non-long or narrow things like movies, letters, and wells. Wells, for God's sake. So you might be asking yourself, well, what exactly are the rules to these suffixes? Like, is there any kind of way that I can kind of go about teaching myself all of these suffixes. And I hate to break it to you guys, but unfortunately, there are no rules. You just have to know that shit. And that's one of the things that makes counting in Japanese so difficult. You just have to know that the suffix that is used to count umbrellas, spears, and bottles is the same suffix that is used to count movies, letters, and wells. Not to mention that there are hundreds and hundreds of these suffixes that are used to count many, many, many different things. In fact, the majority of suffixes out there that are used to count certain things, not even a lot of native Japanese speakers know. Some of these examples include wardrobes, ichisau, and even bread, ikking. Some objects even have multiple suffixes that can be used and they all mean the same thing. If there is one house, for example, you can say ikko, ikken, or itto. It still all means one house. So the reason why I wanted to make this video is not to confuse the shit out of you, which I probably have, unfortunately. It's to tell you guys that are trying to learn Japanese and are struggling to learn Japanese to not to worry too much. Just get the basics down because the Japanese language is so complex that not even native Japanese speakers can fully use the Japanese language and fully understand the Japanese language. It's only those that are bothered to kind of go deeper into the Japanese language and to know those things that not even the native Japanese speakers know, such as 
myself, who has just way too much time on his hands, that really try to understand and know all of this Japanese that is not commonly used in Japan. There is a difference between knowing the language and knowing the common language. And luckily in Japan, the common language is not even close to being as extensive as the actual language. So just get down your basic Japanese and the basic common Japanese and you'll be completely fine in Japan. But if you've learnt your common Japanese and you want to go even further than that and have a lot of time like I did, then go ahead because it's a really, really fascinating language to learn in my opinion. And if you're one of those people who want to get started in Japanese but have no means of doing so, then, you know, I guess you can kind of check out my sponsorship, Lingualift, you know, it's a great online language learning program and the Japanese language learning service is actually pretty decent in my opinion so I guess check out that first link in the description below subtle advertisement but anyways guys I hope you learned something new about Japanese and if you are a Japanese learner then don't give up it's difficult of course it's difficult it's difficult for everybody it's a new language for God's sake but what's important is that you're consistent with your learning and you enjoy learning it that's all that should matter guys let me know in the comments below did you learn something new today and if there are any more Japanese 101 tips and tricks that you'd like to learn from me, then let me know in the comments below. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoy. Subscribe for more anime banner, and I'll see you guys next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime.